Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are learning fundamental concepts of software testing. It's time for us to get started with a new chapter which is chapter 5 where we will be talking about the test management concept which certainly means that anything else what we have not discussed so far about testing will be covered in this particular chapter. As a part of this chapter, we'll be covering several topics like working on the planning details, roles and responsibility in testing, defect management, risk management, version control, and the various test reports too. So let's figure out what exactly all these components of test management are. And today we'll be getting started with the very first thing, which is to talk about the entry and exit criteria, which are defined as a part of test planning. The entry and exit criteria are basically the set of criteria which determine when to start something and when to stop something. And it's very typical, uh, simple example to understand that when you plan out for a vacation or trip to a particular location or destination, you certainly create a to-do list that, hey, what all things you would like to uh, visit when you are there, what all places you want to make sure that you have been there, right? And uh, you also create a list before leaving your house that what all things would you like to carry along with you. So which will let you know that, hey, you're ready to leave your house and get started with the vacation mode. Now, entry criteria and exit criteria pretty much does the same thing, where they define set of actions, set of items, set of work to be completed before you can start something. Considering that the process what we will be doing is not a casual one, it's a professional one. And we just can't get stuck up after starting the process. In your personal life, if you get stuck or you forgot anything at home, you can make a U-turn and come back and pick it up. But when it comes to our professional world, this is called as block. Okay, You will be blocked for a certain duration till you get that whole item, what you need to continue working on it. So it's a very good practice that determine all of those items which you need to have before you can get started with any activity in a document called as entry criteria and similarly when you can say that you are done with what you were supposed to do and stop a particular uh, process and that's what you call it as exit criteria so in order to make sure that you have a better control on the quality of the software the process and the various other testing activities it is very advisable to make sure that you have these set of entry and exit criteria which will assure you that you have everything what you need before you get started and same way at what point you can say your work is done otherwise there's no end to testing it could be infinite and you can continue testing the product how much ever you want it on the first, first side you know when you talk about entry criteria more typically in agile it is also called as definition of ready dor that when the you know team is ready to get started and there it is used for the sprint but in ordinary process non-agile development models it is for anything right you know again entry criteria are not limited entry and exit criteria are not limited to a particular process particular phase or particular level right you can use it wherever you think there are some set of items which need to be assured before getting started for example i can use entry and exit criteria for entire software testing life cycle I can use entry and exit criteria for a particular test level too, like for unit testing, integration testing, system testing, etc. And uh, even for uh, a particular you know, phase too, for example, design, development. So there are no restrictions that where should I only use entry and exit criteria. So entry criteria define the preconditions for undertaking a given test activities to make sure that you are done with all that what you need to do before starting something and that something could be a phase could be a level could be overall test process right and if entry criteria are not met then it is likely that the activity will prove more difficult more time consuming or more costly or more risky in terms of unavailability of those items which you were supposed to have right it will rather cause some delay that you may have to come back or hold on your activities for some time till you get that what you wanted. So some of the examples, right, instead of saying get that, get this and all, let's talk about some quick examples to understand what could be those things which I can include in the entry criteria. For example, a typical list 
of example is provided here where I can say availability of testable requirement. Now this is an entry criteria to get started with test analysis that without a draft, without a document which contains the information about requirement, right? You there's no point getting started with test analysis within your test process. Similarly, available of test items that have met the exit criteria of a prior test level could be also your entry criteria to the next level. For example, exit criteria of unit testing can be used as entry criteria for integration testing, right? It happens after that. Availability of the environment, which is to execute your test cases within the life cycle. So certain environment has to be prepared in order to make sure that you are ready for executions. So before getting off with the test execution, you make sure that the environment which was required to perform the same is available. Availability of necessary test tools where for the test management, automation, etc. You can also define the same thing for the implementation. Availability of test data and other necessary resources required to perform your several activities. So the point here is anything like that can be called as an entry criteria which determines that you are ready to get started with a phase, with a level, or with even the entire process. On the other hand, we are talking about the exit criteria too, where exit criteria, which are in Agile, typically called as definition of done. Here you have a list of items, list of activities, list of, mi list of milestones, which determine that you are pretty much done with what you plan to do and you are ready to stop. Okay, almost done and you can now just say calling off the testing phase or calling off that particular stage of testing. Right, And uh, this basically defines the condition which must be achieved in order to declare that the test level or set of tests are completed. Now entry and exit criteria should also be defined for each test level, test types, wherever applicable. Right, And it is not restricted to even just the process as a whole thing. Now typical exit criteria include plan tests have been executed. For example, you plan to run 100 test cases which you have defined, so all 100 have been executed. A defined level of coverage has been achieved which you agreed with the business to understand that, hey, we will be achieving 90% coverage on the you know, written code or 80% coverage on the written code or talking about you know, meeting those contractual agreements which you discussed initially. The number of unresolved defects within an agreed limit because there would be possibility that not all the defects are getting closed. There are some defects which are deferred which are open due to some you know, other discussions. So there might be a threshold defined that only 5% defects are allowed to remain open. Then you need to make sure that have you fixed 95% or not. If not, continue testing and complete those work and then you can stop. But if you have achieved that, then you can very well stop the same. The number of estimated remaining def defects are sufficiently low. The evaluated levels of non-functional characteristics also will be measured as a part of this exit criteria. So the point is, anything which confirms you that you have done what you were supposed to do before stopping a particular activity or a particular phase is what my exit criteria would consist of. Now, sometimes it also becomes very unfortunate that without meeting the exit criteria as well, you may have to stop testing and terminate it. For example, when you run out of time, when you run out of schedule, or you are completely de deviated from the expectation of the product. So in such situations, uh, we have suspension criteria, and uh, those suspension criteria determine that in what grounds we will suspend the project, or in what counts, uh, what ground, or what criteria we will determine to resume the project, or even you know, just like the worst part could be you ran out of budget, you ran out of time, and customer do not have any extensions for you and you have to stop testing, right? So putting it all together, these criteria are very helpful for defining, determining what needs to be done, how needs to be done, and when to determine when to start something and when to stop something. And these are typical examples, not hard coded, depending on your product, depending on your project, depending on your organization, you can have several things included as a part of it. Again, test manager is someone who's responsible for determining the entry and exit criteria as a part of test planning. So they will pretty much be aware of what needs to be included when it comes to designing them.
right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.